I'm doing carrots, but not just any kind of carrot. I'm doing shredded carrots. There's lots of uses for shredded carrots. And in my tray, I have 500 grams of carrots. Now you look at this, eh, pretty normal, you know. But what if I have just a few more carrots? Should I or should I not add them? Hmm, it's a question that we run into a lot. How much can you put into a harvest ripe tray? Well, I got lots of carrots. So what if I put a few more carrots in? How about 750 grams of carrots? Oh, it's starting to get over the edge. Hmm, is this too many carrots? I still have a lot of carrots, so am I being greedy? How about a thousand grams? Now, this is getting way over the edge. But I got so many carrots. How many more carrots should I put in here? Well, let's get really jiggy. Thirteen hundred grams of carrots. Now this is getting almost to the point of being ridiculous. Is there a limit on how much you can put into a harvest right freeze dryer? Sure. The trays are only the tr thing that holds the trays are only two inches. So if I try to jam this sucker in there, half of this is going to be cut off. Well, you have to think for a minute. How does freeze drying work? Well, it freezes at first creates a vacuum around it, and then heaters underneath the tray will start to heat the food. And as it heats the food, the ice starts to go, or the ice starts to melt, so to speak. And instead of going from ice to a liquid, as soon as that solid ice becomes a liquid, in a vacuum, the vacuum takes the moisture away. It becomes a gas. So, it goes from a solid to a gas, skipping the liquid stage. So the heat from this tray has to work its way up through the, from the heating element through the tray into the food itself. So if I have these big peaks of food here, it's going to be really hard for the heat to get to these upper areas. So what are we going to do? We're going to smash the food down so that it doesn't have so much to transfer through the food. That will still go into my tray. So what we're going to be doing for this little project, we're going to answer the question, how much food can you put into a Harvest Right freeze dryer? So here's our 1300 grams. Here's our 1000 grams. Boy, I can just feel how wet that is. I can just feel the, like the carrot juice in there. Here's our 750 grams. Just smash that down. And our 500 grams. That is really wet. Feels like wet carpet. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to freeze these. And remember, freezing takes some of the moisture out before we even get it into the harvest right. So we're going to pre-freeze all these. We're going to put them in. But this time what I'm going to do, I'm going to pause the freeze dryer about every hour and I'm going to weigh all the trays. Of course we know that the 500 gram is going to finish before anything else. And we know that the 1300 gram is going to take longer. But we're, what I'm going to do is we're going to get to the point where the 500 grams will stop sublimating moisture and will maintain a certain weight. Once it gets to that point, we know this will be done. Same thing with the 750 grams. It's going to get down to a certain weight and then it's going to stop because there's no more moisture. So I'm going to be measuring the weights of these trays every hour until 
the 1300 gram tray gets to a point where it will no longer lose weight and then I'm done. And then we're going to calculate how much time it takes versus how much energy it takes to do this to find out is it better to do small trays or is it better to do large trays. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to have some fun. So this is my stack it deep and dry it cheap project. Uh, I did three different foods. I did carrots, cheddar cheese, and sloppy joe mix. Uh, with the cheddar cheese, cheddar cheese worked out really, really well. Tray, I had 300 grams. The second tray had 600 grams. The third tray had 900 grams. And the tw fourth tr tr tray, I had 1,200 grams. So if you take a look down here, the first tray took about not eight hours to totally dry, where the 1,200 grams took down here at 19 and a half hours. But even though there was a longer time period, if you go up here, you can see that on the 300 grams of cheddar cheese, I was only drying 35 grams per hour. But on the 1,200 one, I was getting a whopping 98 grams per hour. So I was getting quite a bit more food and a bigger bang for my buck with more cheese in that particular tray. Shredded carrots was very interesting because I could not believe how much moisture I got out of uh, shredded carrots. It took a little bit longer. It took almost 37, it took 37 hours to dry everything in this one. For just the same. The first tray had 500 grams, second tray had 750 grams, third 1,000, and the fourth one had 1,300. And the results were similar to the others. On the smaller tray, I was only yielding 26 grams per hour, where with the bigger tray, I was getting 37 grams per hour and being able to get more food in less time. The best one I did was the sloppy joe meat and the sloppy joes, that's one of my favorite things to dry because it works so well when going camping. And these results were almost even better. And four trays, the first one was 500, 500 grams, the second one was 800 grams, the third 1,000 grams, and the fourth was a whopping 1,500 grams. So if you take a look at the smaller one, I was only doing 14 grams per hour, where with the whopping uh, big one, this is, this is actually incorrect. This should say 1,500, not 1,300. So that's a mistake on my part. But I was getting twice as much food uh, dried with the larger amount of food in the tray than with the smaller amount. So try this out. See if it works for you. It has worked for me very well. And I continue to use it. And give me feedback on your experiences. If you enjoy this, please subscribe, give me a like, and I will send more videos your way as soon as I have a chance. Thank you for your time.